100 billion neurons in the human brain each connected directly to 1000 other neurons and each neuron receives 100 inputs in a millisecond thinking remembering and feeling arise from integrated networks of 10 lakhs of neurons here the key point is connections that create the networks are not genetically determined they results directly from environmental stimulation donald o hab canadian psychologist who is very famous for his rules his rules are known as hab's rule hab's rule neurons that fire together wire together hubel and weisel who won the nobel prize in 1981 suggested that structure and function of the brain are shaped by stimulation from the environment after birth what is plasticity plasticity is the ability of a system to reversibly change or alter a response to a stimulus in an activity dependent manner william james was the first one to introduce the term plasticity to the neuroscience in the principles of psychology what is neuroplasticity neuroplasticity is the ability of the nervous system to respond to intrinsic and extrinsic stimuli by reorganizing its structure function and connections which can be described at many levels from molecular to cellular to system to behavior and can occur during development in response to the environment in support of learning in response to disease or in relation to therapy some past studies with showing neuroplastic changes plastic change occur in the musician brains compared to non musicians increase in the volume of motor regions anterior superior parietal areas and inferior temporal areas in the musicians in the brains of bilinguals left inferior parietal cortex is larger than in monolingual brains In 2006 Dragensky and his colleague imaged the brains of German medical students 3 months before their medical exam and right after exam medical students brains showed changes in the regions of the parietal cortex as well as in the posterior hippocampus these regions of the brain are known to be involved in the memory and learning positive outcomes of neuroplasticity development of new skills better cognition improved functions of the aging brain slowing down pathological process promoting recovery of sensory losses improved motor control improved memory more efficient communication between sensory and motor pathways structural changes in the brain synaptic plasticity synaptogenesis neuronal migration neurogenesis neural cell death hips another rule which also known as habian learning when an exon of cell a is near enough to excite cell b and repeatedly or persistently takes part in firing it some growth process or metabolic change takes place in one or both cells such that a's efficiency as one of the cell firing b is increased according to hips rule when firing of a presynaptic neuron repeatedly participate in causing the postsynaptic neuron to fire their synaptic connections become strengthened when firing of presynaptic neuron repeatedly fails to elicit the firing of the postsynaptic neuron their synaptic connections become weakened what is synaptic plasticity the term synaptic plasticity is used to describe changes of the strength of synaptic connections in response to experience and neuronal activity synaptic connections can be modified that is form dismantle strengthen or weaken and neuroscientists hypothesize that these modifiable synaptic connections represent a major form of plasticity underlying memory and learning now here we are taking hippocampal circuit as an example to understand the basics of synaptic plasticity fibers from entorhinal cortex make synapses with granule cells in the dentate gyrus these fibers are known as perforant path Exons of granule cells make synapses with CA3 pyramidal cells. These fibers are known as Mozi fibers. Exons of CA3 pyramidal cells make recurrent synapses with other pyramidal cells. Exons of CA3 pyramidal cells make a synapse with CA1 pyramidal cells. These fibers are known as Kafer collateral. 
CA1 pyramidal cells also receives inputs from perforant path. So here CA1 pyramidal cells have a two inputs. One from CA3 pyramidal cells through scaphal collateral and another from perforant path. Long term potentiation of synaptic efficacy. LTP first described in details by Bliss and Lomo in 1973 which can be measured in hippocampal slices or in AVAC behaving animals, where it can last for several weeks. In their experiments, they place stimulating electrode in perforant path and recording electrodes in dented gyrus granule cells. As a result of the high frequency stimulation, strength of synaptic transmission between perforant path exon and granule cells was enhanced. Importantly, this enhancement could last for many hours to several days. This phenomena is called long-term potentiation. LTP found in the MOSI fiber CA3 synapse, the CA3-CA3 recurrent synapse, the CA3 scaphoid collateral CA1 synapse and the perforant path CA1 synapse. LTP has also been found in many regions of the nervous system including the neocortex, striatum, amygdala, thalamus, cerebellum, and spinal cord. LTP at the hippocampal CA3-CA1 synapse exhibits input specificity, cooperativity, and associativity. Here we are taking AC and BC synapse as an example. When AC synapse receives high frequency stimuli, only AC synapse become potentiated and LTP develops at AC synapse but not at the BC synapse. This property is known as input specificity. When AC synapse receives low frequency stimuli which pairs with stimuli coming from C cell, the AC synapse become potentiated and LTP develops at AC synapse. This property is known as cooperativity. CA3 CA1 synapse the first known example of a Hebbian synapse. What is Hebbian synapse? A synapse whose strength can be enhanced by co-activating pre- and post-synaptic partners. When AC synapse receives high frequency stimuli and BC synapse receives low frequency stimuli, when AC and BC synapse are nearer to each other, AC and BC both synapses are potentiated and LTP develops. This property is known as associativity. To understand molecular basis of synaptic plasticity, here we are taking CA3 CA1 synapse as an example. CA3 presynaptic terminal have glutamate filled vesicles. Glutamate is excitatory neurotransmitter. On another hand, CA1 postsynaptic membrane have two types of glutamate receptors. One, AMPA receptors which are permeable only for sodium ions and second NMDA receptor which are permeable for both sodium and calcium ions but at resting NMDA receptor blocked by magnesium ion. When high frequency stimuli arriving at CA3 presynaptic terminal it opens voltage gated calcium channels. Calcium ion enter inside presynaptic terminal it triggers event glutamate filled vesicles fuse with the presynaptic membrane and glutamate release at the synapse. Glutamate binds with AMPA receptor and NMDA receptor. Here glycine also binds with NMDA receptor. Binding of glutamate to AMPA receptors activates AMPA receptors. Sodium influx occurs via AMPA receptors and postsynaptic membrane becomes depolarized. When wave of depolarization reaches NMDA receptor, it removes magnesium ion and NMDA receptor becomes activated. Large amount of calcium ion enters inside the cell through NMDA receptor. There is increase in the calcium ion concentration in the postsynaptic terminal. Here NMDA receptors are known as coincidence detector because for the activation of NMDA receptor both presynaptic activity as well as postsynaptic activity is required and the removal of magnesium ion this process is known as electrostatic repulsion. Now this calcium ion binds with calmodulin to form calcium calmodulin complex. 
this calcium calmodulin complex bind with calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2. The calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 has 12 subunits. Binding of calcium calmodulin to a particular subunit transiently activates that subunit. When calcium calmodulin dissociates after calcium drops, the subunit becomes inactive. Active calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 can phosphorylate a threonine residue at amino acid 286 in the auto inhibitory domain of neighboring subunit. T286 phosphorylation impairs the auto inhibitory function so that activity of the phosphorylated subunit persists even after calcium calmodulin dissociates. Now this activated calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 triggers early phase and late phase events. In early phase events, calcium calmodulin protein kinase 2 phosphorylates GLU A1 subunit on AMPA receptors so that it stabilizes AMPA receptors to the postsynaptic membrane. It also increases channel conduction of AMPA receptors. It also induces AMPA receptor exocytosis and AMPA receptor trafficking to the postsynaptic membrane. These early phase events are required for short and intermediate term memory. Late phase events are responsible for long term memory. It activates CAMP response element binding site in nucleus and induces transcription. New AMPA receptors are formed and placed to the postsynaptic membrane. How LTP expression occurs? There is formation of new synapse between two neurons. If long term potentiation occurs at all the synapse, the memory storage capacity becomes saturated. But this is not happening because along with long term potentiation, some synapse shows long term depression. When low frequency stimuli arriving at synapse, there occurs lower increase of calcium ions which activates calcium dependent phosphatases which dephosphorylates GLU A1 subunit of AMPA receptors. There also occurs endocytosis of AMPA receptors. Spike timing dependent plasticity. If the presynaptic cell fires repeatedly before the postsynaptic cell, then it is likely that firing of the presynaptic cell contributes to the postsynaptic cell to fire. The synapse between the two cells should be strengthened. If the presynaptic cell fires repeatedly after the postsynaptic cell, then it is unlikely that the presynaptic cell contributes to causing the firing of the postsynaptic cell. Synapse between the two cells should be weakened. Depolarization induced suppression of inhibition. CA1 postsynaptic terminals also having synapses with GABAergic presynaptic neurons. Their presynaptic terminal have GABA filled vesicles. Here GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. When calcium concentration increases in the postsynaptic terminal, it releases endocannabinoid at the synapse. This endocannabinoid binds with CB1 receptors which are present on the presynaptic membrane of the GABAergic presynaptic terminal. Activity of the CB1 receptor blocks voltage gated calcium channel on the presynaptic membrane. So when high frequency stimuli arriving at the GABAergic presynaptic terminal, it cannot open voltage gated calcium channel. So calcium ion cannot enter inside the presynaptic terminal and GABA filled vesicles aren't released at the synapse. This event is known as depolarization induced suppression of inhibition, which helps in maintaining long term potentiation for longer duration of time. Therapeutic neuroplasticity. Here the image showing average cortical output maps for the finger flexors extensors of trained hand in subjects undergoing daily physical versus mental practice. Note the similarity in output maps with either form of practice. This study has shown that physical exercise and cognitive mental exercise induce neuroplastic change in the respected areas of the brain. Is it possible to change physical body function or cognition by directly stimulating the areas of the brain? Yes, it is possible. How it is possible? It is possible through non-invasive brain stimulation, 
डीप ब्रेन स्टिम्युलेशन एंड न्यूरो फार्मेकोलॉजी ट्रांसक्रेनियल मैग्नेटिक स्टिम्युलेशन और टी एम एस लो फ्रीक्वेंसी रिपीटेटिव टी एम एस और थीटा ब्रश टी एम एस लीड टू सपरेशन ऑफ कॉर्टिकल एक्साइटेबिलिटी इन हेल्थी सब्जेक्ट हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी ट्रेन ऑफ रिपीटेटिव टी एम एस और इंटरमीडियंट थीटा ब्रश टी एम एस लीड टू फेसिलिटेशन दिस कैन बी अप्लाइड स्पेसिफिकली एंड सिलेक्टिवली टू डिफाइन कॉर्टिकल रीजन पर्टिकुलरली वेन गाइडेड बाई न्यूरो इमेजिंग एंड फिजियोलॉजिकल मेजर्स टू चेंज ब्रेन फंक्शन एंड नियर बाय प्रमोट न्यूरो प्लास्टिसिटी हाउ इट इज एप्लाइड इन क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस नाउ डेज इट इज यूजफुल इन पोस्ट स्ट्रोक रिहेबिलिटेशन थ्री मेथड्स शुड बी यूज फर्स्ट वन रिपीटेटिव ट्रांसक्रेनियल मैग्नेटिक स्टिम्युलेशन टू रिस्पेक्टेड एरिया ऑन द ब्रेन मैप सेकेंड फिजिकल ट्रेनिंग ऑफ द अफेक्टेड बॉडी पार्ट एज फार एज पॉसिबल third cognitive mental exercise they have to think as their affected body part is normally functioning deep brain stimulations and neuropharmacology are still under research